G'day guys, just testing out the, uh, just picked up the piano in blue from Cine Samples, so I thought I'd just put it through its paces. So this is the piano that Bill Evans played on Kind of Blue, on Kind of Blue recordings with Miles, so before they uh, demolished the studio and took the piano away and everything, they... Uh, they cine samples went in and sampled the whole thing so so yeah they not paying me for this by the way i just uh, i bought it with my own hard-earned cash and uh just thought i'd try it out so it's pretty cool i'm just going to so we've got three different mics you've got close mics room mics and surround mics you can play it uh using either the they recorded it through the desk that they used in the studio, I think it's Columbia, um, and yeah, put it, put it, play it sampled through tape in the desk, or play it just sampled uh, direct and put it in mono or as per normal. So I'm just gonna have to play around with this. So leave it on the tape settings. So it gives a bit more distortion and crunch up the top. It's a bit, a bit smoother direct. So oh, I'll try direct and try it in stereo. So this is sort of as clean as you can go. Let's see how this goes. Just get some, get rid of some of the reverb. Just use the close mics and a bit of the room, a tiny bit of the surround mics. Try that out.
cool. It's nice, nice and clean. I'm just going to switch it over now to. So this is recorded through the desk, through uh, through the tape machine that they used on all those original recordings. I'll see if I can find a bit of info about it. So, um, what was it? So yeah, it was the Clinton Recording Studios in Midtown Manhattan, being turned into apartments. So yeah, so this is Steinway Model D used to live at Columbia Records and 30th, 30th Street Studios. So yeah. So this is the kind of blue piano. So that's pretty cool that they uh, sampled that before it all uh, all got taken away. So I'll put this into tape mode. You can even add the, the original tape here. So check this out. See if you can hear this. Working. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Wow. All right, let's let's grunge it up a bit. Let's see if we can get that real. So get a bit of that tape hiss and the tape sample set. And instead of in stereo, because well, the original recordings, like the kind of blue stuff, that was all in mono. So you can actually use the same mono mic setup that they used for that. So put on that, a bit more of the room mics and chuck a bit of reverb on there. That should give us a uh, more similar sound to that Phil Evans kind of blue thing. Let's see. Turn my mic off so it's a bit cleaner. a little bit dry, I think it's a bit, a bit more reverb on it than that. The room mics, and just turn the mics up rather than using too much of actual reverb and just use the actual microphones in the, in the actual room. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Let's try that out.
Yeah, that's pretty neat. So it's a much, um, like, compared to a lot of other uh, piano libraries, it's, it's kind of got that one, just that one sound, does that one thing, it's not uh, particularly, you know, it's not the most versatile, it's by no means a versatile piano library, but it's just got that one, one sound that's very distinctive and very, uh, very kind of blue, which is pretty cool. Very good. Oh, good day, Kyle. Emmanuel, how are you going? Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, so it's just a little little playthrough. I just thought I uh, finally got a bit of time to uh, to sit down and, and work on it. Have a listen to how it sounds. So yeah, there's not too much to it. It's basically that's that's the one sound. But it does it well. So let's see what other tones you can get out of this. So. If we crank up all the room mics, all the reverb, let's see how sort of atmospheric we can get with this. Oh yeah, so you can adjust the pedal noise. I'll take some of that hum out from the tape here. Yeah, so the pedal noise sound of that. Let's see what that's like. Yep, sounds legit. Take out the close mics and just see if we can get some more atmospheric kind of thing.
Yeah, it's, it's beautiful for balance. It's really, um, it's interesting. Like a lot of software pianos, they sound killer in stereo. But as soon as you play them in mono, they tend to get some weird like phase cancellation and this, that, and the other and that kind of thing. But um, I guess this being recorded in mono, designed to be played in mono for that, that particular sound, it, it really excels at that. It works really well. And it's... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's. I wouldn't play anything, you know, necessarily pop, super pop based or bebop or anything really quick necessarily on it. But it sounds sounds it's beautiful for ballads that kind of thing. The response is interesting. So apparently, like the first time I, I played it just before, when you fire it up, there seems to be. It almost seems like latency when you're playing it. Just a few microseconds of between when you hit the note, when the note actually speaks. But apparently, I think I was reading somewhere that they did that intentionally to sort of capture the very, to make sure they can capture the very sort of start of the transient of when the note speaks. So just to get all that air and everything into the sound. So you can actually trim it though. So you can adjust the sample start point just to tighten it up a bit, which trims it back. Still sounds good. So this is so if you did want to do something a bit quicker, if you made that as least least amount of latency as possible, take a lot of the reverb down, just get the close mics there, get rid of a lot of the surround the mics. Um something like that. Um da -da -da -dum. Yeah, I mean it's got Yeah, it's fine Maybe not quite as immediate as some of the other libraries there But But it's still You can definitely tighten it up so it's it's pliable for I think the, the goal of this is really, really excelling at that ballad, more Bill Evans kind of blue vibe. Who we got in the chat here? Oh, thanks, Kyle. That is a Korg M500 behind me. Well spotted. Well spotted. From 19... Well, I'm not actually sure the year. 70 something. What's the name of that tune? Oh, which tune was that? I played... Played an original one of mine called Continuum, and then Body and Soul after that. It's from one of those harmonization things. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Emmanuel. Cheers. G'day, Joseph. Nice to see you. Ah, Daniel, welcome from Brazil. Very cool. Oh, thanks, mate. Where are the 10 like buttons? <laughs> Comparisons to Keyscape. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, it's definitely... Uh, well, I mean, it's it's a completely... It's kind of apples and oranges because, um, I mean, Keyscape is a massive library. Keyscape's got everything. You did say specifically the C7 piano. Um, well, I guess, I mean, the, the C7, that's a Yamaha, isn't it, in Keyscape? So it's it's just a different sounding piano. I mean, this is a, this is a Steinway. Model D. What's the exact? I'll see if I can find the actual info. It's a model, yeah, Model D Concert Grand. But I mean, this would have been in the fifties and sixties. This, so this is you know quite an old classic Steinway um, piano that's been sampled. Versus Keyscape, you've got a very, you know, a much more modern uh, Yamaha piano. So they're, they're different. Um, 
you can get a lot of text. I mean, Keyscape's just, it's huge. It's a lot more variety. So, you know, you've got all the, the tone shaping capabilities. So you can get a lot out of the Keyscape uh, piano samples. So you can get that real cinematic sort of thing going and you can get uh, the real pop, all the pop stuff and everything in between. So it's much, Keyscape's definitely a much more versatile library. But, I mean, this is, um, it's a different price point too. This is, this is just does one thing and that is purely to sample the Miles Davis, uh, Bill Evans, you know, kind of blue piano. And through the original, I guess, microphones, preamps, desk, tape, everything. So it's that sound. And that's all it does. So um, I'd say Keyscape's a bit more immediate. Keyscape, there's a lot less latency. There's not a lot less latency, but there's, it's a bit less. It's just that they've sampled it differently. They've sampled it a bit. It's a lot tighter to play. Um, whereas this is this has got that sort of vibe. This is a very vibey, airy kind of thing, and it's um, yeah. They're both look. They're both cool. They're both completely different different products for different needs. Keyscape covers all bases. This is one sound. Cool. Puerto Rico, welcome. Oh, thanks, Wobbo. Three AM in New York. What are you still doing up? Well, it's a city that never sleeps. Right. From Bordeaux, early morning. G'day, Christopher. Ah, thanks for tuning in, man. I just want to review on Keyscape religiously. Oh, thank you. That's uh, that's you putting those likes up on that, uh, putting the uh, the view count up on the Keyscape video, is it? <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Well, yeah. So there's uh, not too much more to this this video. I just wanted to have a bit of a play through uh, piano and blue and get a feel for it but yeah feel free to ask any questions or just have a listen uh, what else is there I think it's I mean there's we've pretty much been through most of what's in here it's a it's a fairly straightforward package um, yeah it just runs in just runs in contact so yeah, I might just play around with these settings a bit more and have another little noodle away. So you've pretty much got a couple of ways of adding reverb, I guess you'd say, to the sound. So you've got an actual dedicated reverb control that you can control the amount of reverb and the length of the reverb. But if I turn that off, we just go with three mic positions. So I'll just give you a listen to those so if we just turn those off. So this is the close mics. Why does this still seem to be reverb on that? Let's have a look. Ah, because I've got reverb on it here. There we go. All right. There we go. So this is just the close mic, no reverb. just your close mics 
and you've got your room mics. surround mics. So we've got a fair bit of tone shaping capability there if we just mix them all together. So this is full whack on all three mics, no built-in reverb, so just whatever ambience is in the mics. actually works great just putting all three of them together and you can add in reverb if you want but yeah so that's that's pretty much it there you go so that's Cine Samples Piano in Blue nice little textural piano there what are we what's this um, Keyscape is a Yamaha C7 but Eric put Rina Hammers on the C7 like a Steinway D ah right okay there you go yeah, I mean, that's it's a beautiful sounding piano, that one in Keyscape. It is. It's really nice. It is gorgeous. Piano tutorial on jazz improv one day. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Giant steps. Oh, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Kim. Where did I study music? I studied uh, classical music privately with a teacher where I grew up and did all my grades in sort of classical classical training and jazz wise it's got uh, listen to lots of Oscar Peterson and Herbie Hancock CDs oh cool oh well thanks guys thanks for tuning in I'll uh, see you all live sure I'm going to be going live a lot more often now so I'll uh, I'm sure I'll see you all uh, see you all soon no doubt but uh, stay safe wherever you are in the world and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you all next time.